Hey guys, Complexity Midday here. Um, I'm here to write a blog about my short short stay and visit at the Invictus Gaming Team House. So I've been here for seven days and you know I, the Team House environment, Team House thing is something that I've wanted to do for a while. Here I am actually finally doing it. Uh, so the advantages that you would expect from a team house, you know, just intuitively speaking, are uh, better, more, more reliable practice partners, and more, a lot more insight as to why you won slash why you lost slash what would happen if X happened. You know, would we get Y? Uh, and there's just a whole lot of discussion and stuff you can do. I was really, I was really, uh, what's the word? Satisfied isn't the word. Happy? I'm just going to say happy. I was really happy to know that, it was really convenient, there we go. It was really convenient that every time I lost, I could just turn around and talk to people and be like, hey guys, I lost and I have no idea what I should have done to win or what the best thing to do would be to win and you know maybe an Yasuna would be like hey you know you should do this and uh, then I'd try it out and it'd work and maybe uh, I would get cannon rush and then I would talk to Max and then he would be like oh maybe you should do this and then you know just a lot of good insight overall etc and it's really really convenient something that I'm definitely not used to you know uh, yeah, <laughs> and um, overall, the environment, I feel like a team house environment should pressure and motivate a person to play. Just practice. Like, if you're sitting around watching dramas or something, whatever, while everybody else around you is practicing, I feel like you should feel guilty for that. And... Uh, yeah, that certainly, um, there was certainly a lot of pressure on me to play, especially because um, I'm being sent down to Red Bull Detroit and I want to do well. Uh, and I, I'm just going to feel really not good about myself if I, if I don't do well and I know that I didn't give everything I had in practice during that time. So the people who were at the house, when I was at the house, uh, where Max said, um, right, right, move forward, right there, uh, and then Jim who's right there, and then Yasunu, Cloudy, the, the two Academy members, uh, and XY, of course, uh, she was not at the house, uh, Zelos isn't at the house, I, you would think it's pronounced, you know, X L U O S, Zluos, but it's pronounced Zelos. Sure, let's go with it. That's how he says it, so I guess that's what's right. Just like Avalo, guys. It's Avalo, not Avilo. He calls himself Avalo. Okay. Uh, and we got uh, Hearthstone Pro here, too. Um, former SC2 Pro, Com C O M M, if you, in case you ever wonder what happened to him. Uh, al although he is a Hearthstone pro, he does spend most of his time playing League of Legends, so... Uh, yeah. <laughs> he went like casual upon casual mode. So, it's been unfortunate, but hey, his choice. Um, I think he's doing pretty well, you know, hey, if he's in the IG house, there we go. Uh, still living the pro gamer life, basically. Still in esports. Uh, you know, most of us who uh, stop playing SC2 aren't so fortunate. Um, so he's got that going for him. Uh, so practice itself. People always tell me these horror stories about you know like oh our internet's so bad or whatever, and I got something I like to call the midday internet curse where no matter where I go or why I do, I'm just always gonna have bad internet. So far, so true. Uh, here included. Uh, let's face it. Chinese internet. There's a lot of censorship. There's a lot of great firewalls. There's a lot of there's a lot of crap going on, and um, unfortunately, sometimes when I'm practicing, I say to myself, "How do these guys even? How did these guys ever win a game?" Uh, because sometimes the latency is just so horrendous. I'll be like trying to 
control my lings against Talions and they'll all just get roasted and I'll be like, this is bullshit. So, yeah, uh, it is really that bad. I've heard some horror stories from Korea to North America too. And then all the Koreans say, you know, like the Chinese players got it so easy. And then all the Chinese people are like, the Koreans got it so easy. Um, and I've heard opinions from both sides, but I think from what I've experienced, because I've heard some Chinese people say that while they were in Korea, there was like pretty much no latency. Uh, and I've heard some people from Korea be like, well, it's like Korea that has no, that has all the latency, you know, other countries don't, like, like China doesn't. So it's like, I've played to NA, sorry, other way around. I played from China to NA without any lag. It only happened ever once, but it did happen. Um, and I've heard CN players say, hey, I've been in Korea. There was no lag when I played. But what I can, <coughs> what I can say for sure is that NA players really do have it a lot easier than other people when it comes to playing to other regions. Um, basically, no, where, no matter where I am in NA, if I play to another region, it's it's fine. It's it's not the end of the world. Um, Ling Bane fights, you know, micro can be tedious. I might manually detonate a Bane Ling and it'll completely miss. Uh, but that's when your move units going at like light speed. I can imagine force fields being a bit of an issue. I hear Protoss players complaining about that all the time. But yeah, and then um, yeah, when we play other servers, it's like we really got to use. It. For me personally, I'm usually just focused enough in the game to not notice or care about the lag or pay any mind to it. So there's that. Um, I feel like people, th that being said, I feel like people let it get into their heads sometimes too much, but either way, um, NA players got it the easiest, I think. Maybe EU players have it pretty easy too, I'm not sure, but uh, we have it pretty easy when it comes to playing other servers. So. People think, like, if you're wondering what the scene is like in China, I've talked to all the guys around here, and they've been like, SC2 is not a popular game, and they all say it. They all, and they all say it just like that. They're like, SC2 is not a popular game. And we all hear about, um, you know, Total Biscuit was just like, include China, include China in, the, in his blog um, when he was doing the show craft something I think it was shellcraft I anyways um, and it was something I forget what it was uh, but yeah he was like include China and then recently uh, there was a reddit post about Douyu TV the Chinese version of Twitch having um, 130k viewers watching Pro League I'm not exactly sure if that's true I was uh, talking to Cloudy who was sitting right next to me and I'm like and and at the time when I asked him, I'm like, when I at the time when I talked to him rather, I was like, holy crap, dude! The Chinese stream has like 55k viewers, and the NA stream only has like 19k. Uh, sorry, the English stream only has 19k. Uh, and I'm like, well, right now you the Chinese have got double the viewers than the English uh, viewers have. And then he was just like, the number is not true; it's fake. And I'm like, what, what are you talking about? He's like. I would say that 60% of 60% of the viewers on Douyu are just fake, made by the website, and uh, so they just want more people to view it because the you know people will be like, oh hey, everybody's viewing this already. Um, I'm not sure if I believe that. Uh, it's entirely believable if you know what I mean, but I'm not sure if I believe it. Uh, so. I guess just something to keep in mind, uh, but either way, more 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 regions watching the better. Um, so these guys, these guys are all like some people. They they all have dreams, and they all have they all want to get results, but sometimes. Sometimes, like, I'm starting to notice, like, you know, actions speak louder than words. It's like, I'm starting to notice actions of, like, people, you know, just sort of taking a step back and going back to life, right? Uh, for example, Yasunu Tuesday is going back to university. He's upset that he was removed from WCS. Uh, same with XY. And, of course, they broke the rules of conduct, and that's the thing. But then again, so did, like, 
uh, so did Koreans uh, in the earlier season, and uh, they nothing happened to them, right? Uh, so that's a bit frustrating to see, and like it wasn't even a thing that was kept quiet too. Like while it was happening, I was bringing it up in like the SE2 manager Skype chat, and uh, nobody like gave a crap. Uh, Sorry, I shouldn't say that. There are people who there are people who there are people who care, but nobody who cared enough to like do anything about it, right? Like all I could do is tell people about it. I don't have the power to, you know, like lay down the ban hammer like Blizzard does. Uh, so that that's a that happened. And uh, there are A no more WCS tournaments for the rest of the year. And B not many Chinese tournaments. There's that gold thing that came out recently. I'm not sure what that's about, but you know, <coughs> uh, there's 50 grand Chinese dollars in it, RMB, and that's about it's like a little less than 10 grand USD. I think that's right, and you know, again, not that much money. A reasonable amount of money, but not that much money. Um, compared to, let's say, uh, a GSL. Of course, you know, GSL went way harder, you know, oh, okay. Uh, but, yeah, it's like, they have a tournament once in a long while, and there's not that much money in it, uh, comparatively speaking. And it happens much more scarcely. Like, it's just, like Although I guess I shouldn't really say that, because this is the first time that happens, so I don't know what the recurring frequency is going to be. But yeah, you, anyways, you get my point. Um, there's a lot of tournaments that happen, like small things, like online cups. Like there's this monthly cup that gives 1.5k RMB, but then again, that's just like a monthly cup, and 1.5k RMB is like not much. There are multiple premier tournaments every month, and yeah, like uh, CN needs a lot of justification to send their players out, and there's also time restrictions. Like, I know they were thinking of sending out maybe Jim to Red Bull Detroit, but after I told the coach plus manager Edison about what the, when the date was, he said, you know, they just, they just couldn't do it. I'm not exactly sure what the reason was. Maybe it was, uh, it has something to do with the IEM Toronto qualifiers. Either way, it's, it's, it's just that way. Not only is it difficult to get people out, you know, if you remember, they had visa issues earlier, uh, and they couldn't even come to WCS America. I think this was the thing. I'm pretty sure this was the thing. And yeah, um, so as for myself, you know, I'm off to Red Bull Detroit. Uh, I'm hoping to do very well there. My personal expectation, and I believe also the expectation that my team has, is that I at least get top 32. Uh, and I'm fully confident I can make that happen. It's just a matter of, of course, you know, luck isn't a word that I like to use in StarCraft a lot. Um, even when I'm really upset or angry, which happens more than you might think it does, but uh, like I really try to stray away from that word, and the only times I ever use it is if like it's a matter of spawn location, right? Like I send my overlord here, and my Zerg opponent sends his overlord here, and his overlord gets to mine before I get to his, because I guess the wrong spawn position, and see he sees my gas, and I don't see his gas, like uh, gas timing rather. Um, if there's a gas, and that's like one of the few times I'll use the word luck, uh, because that's just probability that, that, that there's luck. There's nothing I can do about it, and it's also a part of the reason why I don't like four-player maps, uh, or rather multiplayer maps, anything that's other than one v one. And the other time that I'll use the word luck is like bracket luck. Like if I get, I I think it was Sarovati who said it, and he's just like. Uh, I'm gonna avoid the other person's name, but somebody got like five diamonds in a row at MLG Anaheim, and then he had to go from playing only foreigner on a Korean team state to like multiple time champion Hyun, and then <laughs> like that's 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 bracket luck. Um, sometimes there's seating done. I'm not sure if it was done at MLG, but you guys get my point, right? I hope I hope I don't get some horror group. I know Red Bull does some uh, good seating. Um, I know that they try to make it so that uh, name players will advance, but the thing is that 
I know for a fact that to Red Bull Detroit, there are some lesser known names that won't be so uh, well known, and I feel like Red Bull will just sort of glance over it, and maybe they'll put like like me, Teja, um, Demo, and Snake Hips in the same group, and all of a sudden it's it looks like a horror group for me, uh, because all of a sudden it looks very difficult and the chances of me getting out even the starting group is very questionable and if you're wondering who the hell Demo or Snake Hips is I've already proved my point like you guys don't know who these guys are but they're very very high level players and uh, because they're not named players Red Bull might just mesh them all into a group and I'm hoping I don't get a a freak group of death or something like that um, so yeah that's a thing uh, other than that though I'm super excited for it Red Bull does some amazing like over the top like awesome production basically and uh, I'm super excited about it the whole thing um, for for like the whole quote unquote esports stream um, some of you may imagine it as like uh live in a team house, it's basically, it's, it's, it's essentially a non-stop LAN, right? A non-stop LAN party uh, where you can do whatever the hell you want, um, most of the time. Depends what kind of team house environment you're in. If you're in Kespa, that's, that's, that's not happening. But um, it's basically a non-stop LAN, and then if you're really good, which obviously is part of the quote-unquote dream, you'll be sent out to tournaments and such like that, and, you know, the part of the dream is like people cheering your name in the crowd and stuff like that. You standing on stage holding a big trophy, and obviously I'm not even I'm I'm not close to there yet uh, in terms of a tournament win. But uh, I'm living, I've lived, I'm living slash lived part of the dream. I guess you could say I'm being flown to events and I've stayed in a team house environment, and it's uh, people think. Like the like, uh, Sasquatch made a blog a while ago about common misconceptions in esports, and lots of those are right. Uh, esports is not as glamorous as some people may think it is. Some people think that passion overcomes everything, and sometimes it does. But a lot of the time, <coughs> the passion fades for practicality, and I'm not saying that's me and I'm not even saying if it should or shouldn't be me because I'm not exactly sure if it should or shouldn't but I've just noticed around the team house there's actions um, that might be representing this for example uh, some of the players right now are that aren't in the house like Zluos, Zelos, how he pronounces it, and Chigua. Uh, Chigua is actually at uh, his home area getting married and as for Zelos I'm not exactly sure what he's up to and as I said Yasun is going back to school so yeah, there's there's that happening. Um, so it's just a matter of personal choice and stuff like that. If you really want to get big into esports, you know, it's funny. A friend worded it to me like this, but he worded it to me like, going all in on esports is riskier and it sounds dumber than doing esports while going to school. And like, it, he's it, like, my friend was totally right. Um, or he sounds totally right, rather. Because you would think intuitively that if you just did nothing but practice StarCraft all day, you would have a significantly higher chance than people who don't play StarCraft all day to make it pro or whatever, and big shot. Uh. And, uh, uh. but going to school, going to school is a thing, you know? Yeah. It's your backup plan, it's your second skill set. It allows you to be, um, a contribution to society. I want to, I don't want to, I don't want to make it sound like, um, no, no, I do want to make it sound like that, okay. Uh, because if you're practicing to be a pro and you're not a pro yet, you're basically not contributing to society. Let's be real here, okay. Uh, and if you are a pro and stuff, then I guess, you know, there's advertisement dollars or stuff like that. You're, you're showcasing yourself in front of a bunch of people. You're a quote-unquote cyber athlete, pro gamer, whatever you want to call it. So I guess in that regard, you're contributing to an industry. Uh, but if you're not part of that industry yet, if you're just, like, if people can't discern you from the average gamer because you're not a pro gamer or or a very high level gamer that has a very high probability to be a pro gamer, 
then there we go. Um, step it up, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I guess that's sort of all my thoughts in a nutshell. I went off on a lot of tangents. Hopefully it was like insightful slash entertaining slash you really disagree with my opinion and want to tell me about it, which is totally fine. Um, not everybody thinks the same. Uh, just, just things to keep in mind, I suppose. And overall, for me, this experience, definitely glad I have it. I had it. Um, I keep mixing those two words up because I'm making this vlog inside the house. Uh, and really thankful to Invictus Gaming for having this opportunity. That's basically it. Um, do I have any extra thoughts? Nope, I'm good. See you guys later.